Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Man, oh man, what a treat it is to dive into a heaping bowl full of Quaker puff rice or Quaker puff wheat topped with milk and your favorite fruit. Mmm, what a breakfast. Say, these king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of wheat or rice are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. Tomorrow, sure, get off to a flying start with this breakfast treat. Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. Old Ned Howe lived on the outskirts of Whitehorse with his nine-year-old grandson, Timmy. Ned had worked one of the first small claims in that section, and though he hadn't struck it rich like others around him, he was said to have a tidy sum stowed away, to which by frugal living he added to from time to time. In his gruff way, he loved his grandson, Timmy, and made it a point to take the boy uptown when the boats came in, knowing the pleasure and excitement Timmy got from the event. Well, there she is, Timmy, all set to leave on the last trip of the season. Golly, it's a big boat. I wish we could ride on it someday. Uh, someday we will, Timmy. Gosh, Grandpa, maybe someday I'll be a boat captain. Like the man up there on the front of the boat. <laughs> you change your mind oftener than your grandma used to, Timmy. Last time I heard you were going to be a Mountie like Sergeant Preston. Before that, you said you might like to be a trapper like Bill Kemper. <laughs> now you want to be a riverboat captain. Well, maybe if I had a dog, I would decide to be a Mountie after all. Yeah, dogs cost money, Jimmy. And it'll take a heap of it to buy a dog like Sergeant Preston's got. Yes, sir. Oh, but I could start with just a little dog, Grandpa. <laughs> well, maybe someday a little dog will follow you home, Jimmy. Then it won't cost anything to own him. <clears throat> and that wind is cutting right through me, Jimmy. I'm going to the store. Meet me there later, as soon as the boat leaves. All right, Grandpa. Uh, be sure you come right over there to the store. I don't want to have to come looking for you. All right, sir. I'll come right there as soon as the boat leaves, honest. Uh, see you in a little while, then. Keep out of trouble. So long. Leaving Timmy at the boat landing, old Ned went to the trading post to get a few supplies. Well, Ned! Hey, that's you and Timmy be at the landing watching the last boat leave for Dawson. Well, I took Timmy to the landing all right, Mike. He's still down there. Too cold for me, though. Cold. You mean you can't take it, Ned? Timmy's got more gumption than you. Yeah. Must be getting old, man. Now, don't be insulting me customers. You weather-beaten bunch of Chicago's. Yeah. Chicago's. <laughs> Ned ought to hold a mic. And most of them being here since ground was first broke. Fact is, I am getting kind of old in the joints, and Timmy don't seem to feel that wind like I do. <laughs> And it gets some of you old rats, too, or you wouldn't be in here hugging that story. <laughs> there, he told you the truth that time. <laughs> there she goes. Won't hear that sound for months. Almost wished I was born. <laughs> you stand around that stove every season and wish, but they never go. They're like you, Ned. You couldn't drag them out to Yukon with a dozen horses, as I. I'm satisfied to be living here, even if I don't get much of a take from that little claim of mine. <laughs> Wish I had your sock of gold, Ned. Yeah, must have a good hiding place. You ought to put it in the bank, Ned. I don't believe all you hear. I've got just enough to keep going. 
Give me some coffee, Mike. Sure. Mike, it's coffee. Right. It is. Thank you, sir. Now, maybe you'd be wanting something else, Snitter. Nope, that's all for now. Here's the money. Well, see, look. Here's your grandson, man. What's that? Look, Timmy's dragging a small dog on a rope. <laughs> hey, Grandpa, look. I'm looking. He ran off the boat just as it was leaving. He ran right up to me and licked my hand, and and he sort of, well, followed me all the way over here. <laughs> May I keep him, Grandpa? May I please? <laughs> followed him, he says. And him dragging the mutt along with a five-foot rope. Followed him. <laughs> That's one for the books to say. It's supposed to be a dog. <laughs> it looks like a dirty mop. <laughs> Picked up a mongrel. Well, he's a nice dog, and I like him, so there. And he wags his tail when I call him Rags. See? <laughs> rags? That's sure a name that fits him, kid. He looks like a roll of dirty rags at that. <laughs> That's not so at all. Please, Grandpa. May I take him home? May I, Grandpa? Jimmy... He sure isn't much of a dog, like they say. If he was a real husky, for instance, that we could keep outside. But, oh, but that mongrel. No, Sonny, you better leave him go. I wouldn't have him around under our feet. Oh, Grandpa. Rags won't get in the way, will you, Rags? I said no, Timmy, and that settles it. Untie that rope and let him go. Oh, he likes me a lot. Look at him licking my hand. No, Ned. Why not let the boy take the dog home? Sure, it isn't big enough to be in the way. <laughs> sure, take him home. Maybe you can get a sled and train him to pull it. That mongrel's just about your speed, huh? <laughs> well, listen, mister. What I do is none of your business. Oh, you see the meat old man mad, Rusty. Better watch out. He'll sing that dog on you. <laughs> uh, don't pay any attention to him. Well, here comes Sergeant Preston. <laughs> Better watch that dog you got, Timmy. King might eat him alive. What's that, Mike? <laughs> You mean King might harm that little dog of Timmy's? You're wrong. Look there. You like him, King? <laughs> Golly, they're friends already. My dog likes King a lot. He's a nice little dog, Timmy. I'm sure he doesn't need all that heavy rope on him, does he? Timmy found the dog on the landing. That rope is how he got the dog to sort of follow him. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you don't look any too pleased with Timmy's dog, Ned. No, it isn't his dog, Sergeant. I told Timmy he couldn't have it. I couldn't stand that mongrel around the cabin, no, sir. Oh, golly, Grandpa. A dog of his own to look after is a good thing for a little boy to have, Ned. He'd be good company for Timmy. Sure he would. Tis the truth the sergeant's speaking, Ned. Well... Oh, gosh, Grandpa. Are you going to say I could keep him? Are you... Please? Well, all right. You could bring him home. That's the way it's all. But mind you, Timmy, the first time he gets in my way, out he goes. Understand? Oh, golly, yes. I'll take good care of Rags, honest. Yeah. Come on, Timmy. Let's get going. So long. Bye, Ned. Come on, Rags. King saying goodbye to Rags, Sergeant. I'll bring Rags over to see King at your cabin sometime. May I? Of course, Timmy. Anytime you like. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come along, sir. Goodbye. Come on, Rags. <laughs> Man alive, what a mangy-looking mongrel. I wouldn't let a kid of mine on it. No, I don't believe you would. Sure, and it did me hurt good to watch Timmy with that little dog. Ragged looking, though he is. Maybe Timmy sees more in that dog than we do, Mike. I'll take my supplies now. Are they ready? Right there on the counter in that bag. Good. I'll see you again, Mike. So long. Monkey. So long. Every day for the next week, Timmy left the cabin with rags at his heels and walked the short distance to Sergeant Preston's cabin for a visit. Sergeant Preston was amused at the way King, in big dog fashion, seemed to tolerate the shaggy little dog as it barked and nipped at him in a playful way. And, too, Preston noticed that King seemed to watch for Timmy and Rags from day to day, and it pleased the Maori to see Timmy so happy. One evening in the cafe, two of the men who had been in the store the day Timmy found Rags were sitting at a corner table talking. You know, Rusty, I'm getting fed up with this town. Wish we'd gone on a Selkirk or Dawson City. Well, we could still go if we had the dough to buy a dog. Team. Yeah. We couldn't buy one dog between us. Speaking of dogs reminds me of something, Ray. Yeah? What? Remember the kid that came into the store with that mongrel a little over a week ago? Yeah, I remember. What about it? I was just thinking. The men in the store were kidding the old man about the sock of money he had hid away. Mm-hmm. Think he really has any money hid away? They seem to have reason to think so. Hmm. 
It's on your mind, Rusty. Well, he lives alone with that kid on the edge of town. Doesn't have any dogs. <laughs> that is, except that mongrel they took home. <laughs> he still hasn't any dog, I'd say. Yeah, that's right. You know, a couple of guys might be able to make that old coot tell where he has that money of his hidden. Must be around the cabin someplace. Yeah. A couple of fellas might do that. Like you say, it's snowing outside, too, so there wouldn't be any tracks left to show where they went by the time someone found the old man and the kid next day. I like your ideas, Rusty. Well, what about it, Ray? You want to make a try at it? <clears throat> Count me in. Let's go while the idea's still warm. Sure, why not? It's going to be easy, and nobody will get wise if we did it. We'll use handkerchiefs to cover part of our faces. Let's go. Later that evening, old Ned and Timmy had finished supper and were preparing to go to bed. The cold wind howled outside the small cabin, and the little dog Rags, leaving the corner near Timmy's bunk, walked over and started to lie down in front of the fireplace. Here you! Get away from there! Get! Rags is cool, Grandpa. Won't you let him sleep in front of the fire? Nope, can't stand to have him lying there in the way. Get him back into his corner or I'll put him outside so help me. Well, all right. Come on, Rags. Here, boy. I'll carry you over to the corner. Now, see here, Timmy. Don't be picking that dog up like that. Like as not, he's got fleas. Oh, no, Grandpa. See how clean he is? I washed him over at Sergeant Preston's cabin just the other day. There you are, Rags. Uh, <laughs> just the same, I don't see why I let myself get talked into having that mongrel around. Golly, Grandpa. You wouldn't like people to call you a mongrel, would you? Of course not. Don't talk silly talk, Sonny. Dogs are dogs, and some are mongrels, like that one. But people are people, and I... Now, who in thunder can that be in this storm and all? One side, Grandpa. Now, oh, she here. Get out of the oh. way. Grandpa, they have their faces covered like robbers. Shut up, kid. Oh. Ah. 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 Come here, you. I'll fix you. Don't you hurt, Rag. Get outside, you mongrel. <laughs> now, old timer, we come here for that sack of money you got hit away. Speak up. I'll use this gun on the kid first, then on you. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, fellas and girls, here's the swellest tasting breakfast ever. Take a heaping bowl full of delicious Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice. Pour on some milk or cream and... Good heavens, look what's loose in here. It's a horse. Hey, you, whoa, whoa there. Whoa, boy, whoa. Good heavens. If that horse could only talk, I'd ask him a thing or two. Well, go ahead. Imagine a horse coming in... Huh? Huh? Did that horse say something? I said, go ahead. Ask me. You're a talking horse? What's wrong with that? You talk, don't you? Well, sure, but... I... Well, so do I. But I... What are you doing here? Came to talk business with you. Business? I'm the milkman's horse. Milkman? Say, I was just talking about milk. And about the swellest breakfast ever. Of course, being a horse, you wouldn't know about that. I wouldn't, huh? Well, look, you, you take a bowl, then you fill it up with tasty Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. In case you don't know it, Quaker puffed wheat and rice are the ready-to-serve breakfast cereal shot from guns. Everyone knows that. Then you pour on some milk. Gee, you're a smart horse, all right. Suppose you know that these king-sized grains are exploded up to eight times normal size. Sure. That's what makes them crisp and tender. And did you know they furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron? That's your life. They're good for you. Say, like I said, you're one smart horse. Maybe we ought to go into business together. That, sir, is precisely why I'm here. Now you're really talking. I'll see you later. But first... Fellas and girls, it isn't every day you meet up with a talking horse. But you can meet up with a swellest tasting breakfast tomorrow or any day. That breakfast is wheat or rice shot from guns. Delicious with milk or cream and fruit. Ask Mom to get both kinds. That's Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Shot from guns.
Now to continue our story. After throwing the little dog Rags out into the storm, the man Rusty closed the door of the cabin. Then, drawing a gun, he threatened Timmy and old Ned in an effort to find out where Ned's money was hidden. For a moment, both Timmy and old Ned stood speechless, their eyes glued to the gun that was pointed at them. Come on, I said, speak up. Where's the money you got hidden away in this cabin? Uh, You made a mistake, mister. My claim's a pool. So you want a stall, huh? Grab that kid, Ray, and show the old man we mean business. Sure. Come here, kid. You let me go. Uh, No, wait. But don't let him hurt me. Wait. Wait. Wait, I'll tell you. You Let the boy go. That's better. Let the kid go, Ray. Get over there. Keep quiet now. You dirty crooks. If you weren't two to Uh, one... Shut up. Now you see here. If you expect me to talk, you better... You better talk and talk fast. We'll really get rough. Uh, it's over in that bunk. Under the mattress. Go see if he's telling the truth, Ray. All right. You better be. Find anything? Yeah. Small sack. Now look in it. Yeah, that's it, all right. By golly, the old two did have a sock put away. There. <laughs> that's all my savings. <laughs> I should have put it in the bank. I bet you when we tell Sergeant Preston, he'll find you and get that money back. We'll be a long way from here when somebody finds you. Bring some cord, Ray, and tie them up in the bunks. Yeah, I'll get some raw hide I saw hanging on the wall over here. All right, guys. Tie the old man first. Come we'll come by here for a day or two of that. Hurry up. We haven't got our knife. There. Hold him. Get up on your bunk, Gramps. Go on. Go in. Get in there now. Try to speak now. I'm going to run and get Sergeant Preston. Come back here, you. Get away from that door. Go on. Go on. Let me tie the kid up. Oh. Put him on the other bunk. Oh, we're out of here. We ought to throw him out in the storm like we did that mongrel. Ah, it's too close to time oh. for that. There. Carry him over now. Oh, put me down. Oh. There. Oh. The, the cords are tight. You'll get used to it. I know who you are, too. You were in the store the day I found rags. I heard you talking, man. I'll tell Sergeant Preston when he comes. Hey, Ray, did you hear that? The kid's smart enough to recognize our voices. I place you two now. What are we going to do, shoot him? No, I got a better idea. Nobody will suspect anything if this cabin should burn down and they don't get out. No, yeah. no, you wouldn't do that. Grandpa, don't let him do that. It'll teach you both a lesson. Bring the lamp with you to the door, Ray. When we go out, we'll pitch it over into the far corner. <laughs> they can watch the fire crawl up on them then. Get the lamp and let's go. That's a good idea, Rusty. By the time anyone finds them, the fire would have covered up the fact they were tied up. Yeah, folks will think they were sleeping or something and just couldn't get out, that's all. Get the lamp, Ray. All mm-hmm. right. Yeah, the bottom of the lamp is glass. Break easy, spill the oil. Here it is, Rusty. Now, wait a minute. Take the money and welcome, but let us go. We won't say a word to anybody about it. That's a promise. They can't burn us up, Grandpa. Don't let them. Don't listen to them, Rusty. Yell their heads off. First chance they got. No. No, we wouldn't. Would we, Timmy? You can take my word for it. We, we won't tell anybody like Grandpa says. Please let us go. Please. Well, uh, maybe... Don't be a uh... fool, Rusty. If you like your plan, you better do it sooner. Somebody might happen to come along this way. Yeah, I guess you're right at that. Give me the lamp. Hey, uh... Now let's get to the door. Hey, you'll be sorry, you murderers. Open the door, Ray. Then I'll toss this lamp into the far corner like I said. Ah, those two will sure have a warm time of it for a while. <laughs> Meantime, Sergeant Preston was in his cabin with King when they heard a noise at the door above the whining of the wind. Sounds like a dog outside, King. Let's go see. What? Timmy's little dog, Rags. Come on in, fella. Hey, Rags. Come here, boy. It's almost as though Rags were telling King something. Come on, fella. Funny rags is out in this storm. I wonder. I'll get my park on. No <laughs> way. No way, fella. We'll take you home. Come along, rags. One king. I guess it won't hurt to hurry a bit. Come on, king. Rags is running ahead. A few minutes later, as Sergeant Preston ran through the streets after Rags and King, he met Mike from the trading post. Yes, hey, Sergeant Preston. Wait a minute. Hello, Mike. Oh, there's a plane like me to be chasing after dogs. 
just to give him a run, says I. I think something's wrong at old Ned's place, Mike. Great day. Then I'll come along with you. Let's go. All right. What makes you think that, Sergeant? The way Timmy's dog is acting. What? You don't mean you let that little dumb dog fool you into thinking that... Holy saints, look ahead. Ned's cabin. It's burning. Come on. The little dog's trying to get inside. Timmy, he's inside. You got this door open? The dogs, they both run in. You can't get in, Sergeant. Wait here. Timmy! Timmy! As Sergeant Preston entered, he noticed that the corner of the cabin away from the bunks was ablaze. Making his way inside, he saw first King, then Rags, each in the bunk, pulling at a figure. One of Ned, the other of Timmy. Ned and Timmy must be unconscious now. They're tied up. I'll take Ned. Get Timmy, King. Help Rags get Timmy. The intelligent dog, King, went to the bunk where the small figure of Timmy lay with Rags tugging at his clothes. The big dog grasped the boy's clothing and pulled hard. Slowly, the boy's figure slid to the floor, and together, Rags and King dragged him across the room toward the door. Meantime, leaving Ned outside, Sergeant Preston returned to find the dogs had pulled Timmy almost to the door. I'll get him, King. Glory be! Get that both of them and look at him, tied hand and foot. There. Help me cut the cords, my friend. There. That's got him. You think you're all right? I think so. No, but... Sergeant Preston. I knew you'd come. Oh, look, Ned's coming to Jimmy. Jimmy. Lad. You're both all right, Ned. Take it easy. Uh, thank goodness. Rags. <laughs> it's Rags. Uh, that it is. The crook sergeant. They got my money. Here comes the crowd. Mike, you and the others get Timmy and Ned to my cabin. King and I have a bit of business to do before the crowd covers the tracks we want. We'll look after Ned and Timmy. <laughs> and Rags, too. Good. King? A short distance from the cabin, Sergeant Preston and King found the tracks they were searching for. Preston knew the men couldn't have gone far, and he and King followed the tracks up the trail away from town for a short distance. Then they approached a deserted cabin alongside the trail. Inside the cabin... Rusty and Ray sat near a newly started fire talking. <laughs> ah, that burning cabin won't attract attention till it's gone beyond control. <laughs> Nobody will suspect anything. And in a short time, the falling snow will cover our tracks. Yeah. I still don't like being this close to town. I'd like more than three miles between us and that mountain. Ah, don't be a fool. How's he to know we had anything to do with the cabin fire? Well, I guess you're right, Rusty. After all, we can be comfortable here till the storm lets up. Well, then we'll buy a dog team and head for Selkirk. That's right, Ray. <laughs> ah, the gold in the sack on the table will come in mighty handy. Uh, I guess I'll turn in. Hold, hold, Peter, will you? The Mountie. Got him down, Ray. No, you don't. No, I'm hit. As Preston no. fired at Rusty, Ray drew his gun and aimed it at the Mountie. But he failed to see the great dog king streak past his master and with a growl leap through the air. The impact knocked Ray off balance. His shot went wild. Moving swiftly, Sergeant Preston went toward Ray with his gun ready as the big dog stood snarling before the thoroughly frightened man. That dog, don't let him attack me. He won't attack unless you make a wrong move. Easy, King. Easy, boy. You haven't anything on us, Monty. No. Maybe this bag of gold will be good evidence. That's our gold. Stop lying. I'm taking both of you back to my cabin. There you'll find someone to testify against you. Now put your things on and get going. Later that night, Sergeant Preston and King arrived at their cabin with the two crooks and found Mike and other townsmen waiting with Ned and Jimmy. All right, get in there. Well, here he is. And he's got both the heathens, too. Those are the two men who tied us up and stole Grandpa's gold and, and set fire to the cab. And they threw rags out in the storm, too. Yep, what Timmy says is true. Good thing they did throw rags out. That was their big mistake. You mean that runny little mongrel is to blame for you getting us? Rags isn't a runny little mongrel. He's a hero, isn't he, Sergeant Preston? He certainly is, Timmy. Rags came to my cabin here and carried on so that I decided to investigate. Sure, and if the sergeant hadn't, have, you both would have burned up, that you would. I certainly would have burned up. And with my own eyes, I saw that little mite of a dog rush in the burning cabin with King and do his best to pull Timmy out. <laughs> it was King that did most of the pulling, <laughs> but Rags did his best. And to think I didn't want Timmy to have him. <laughs> here, Rags. Here, boy. Rags, I'm sorry. 
And you'll always live with this as long as you want to. Oh, golly. I'm so glad my dog isn't going to be called a, a mongrel anymore. Sure, and I'll paste the first one that says it, and I will. Ah, uh, if it hadn't have been for that crazy mongrel. Ah, hey, get away from me, you <laughs> Look at that now. I don't have to stick up for him. <laughs> He's a spunky little fella. <laughs> it is like some people. You can't tell by the size or appearance what kind of a heart they got inside, says I. That's right, Mike. King and I both think Rags is really great, don't we, King? <laughs> King, you got back my money and caught those thieving killers. You and Timmy really owe your lives to little Rags. But I can say that thanks to King, these two will go to jail for robbery and attempted murder. And the case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Extra! Extra! Try this extra special breakfast treat of the week! Yes, serve Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice together in a cereal dish. Separate the two with fresh fruit and add milk or cream. It's different. It hits the spot. Yes, keep a supply of delicious Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice on hand at all times. And remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. It comes only in the famous big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Always look for him. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker Pup Rice and Quaker Pup Wheat. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, Directed by Fred Flowerday and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case on one condition. When King and I went to the boat landing in Selkirk to meet a brother officer, we didn't know the exciting adventure we'd go through before that day was over. It was a tense moment when we came face to face with a desperate killer who had to drop on us. King really earned his keep that day. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.